What's cracking, everyone? My name is Ryan, and today we're going to be talking about three Hi-Fi Man headphones for a Hi-Fi Men comparison video. Now, the baseline for this came back when I did my video on the Aria Organic, and one of the most common questions I had was, how does the Organic sound compared to the HE-1000 headphones? Well, thanks to Audio46, I'm able to bring this video to you because they did send me out the HE-1000 Stealth Edition and the HE-1000 Special Edition headphones to do this video. Shout out to Audio46 again, by the way. Now, with that out of the way, let's get into it. All right, so before we talk about anything else, I do think it's important to note the price differences between each of these headphones because I think that's where a lot of these comparison questions are coming from. So the Aria Organic right here is the cheapest at $1,299. Now, the HE1000 Stealth Edition over here originally retailed in at $29.99, but they have dropped it all the way down to $13.99. And then the HE1000 Special Edition originally retailed at $34.99, and now they have dropped that down to $19.99. So really, the differences between all three headphones, about $600 from low to high end, and even from low end to the Stealth Magnet Edition, just 100 bucks. So what do you get for the extra money? And I hope to answer that as we do talk about sound. Now, I do think it's also relevant to note the technical differences between each of these headphones and then we're gonna move on from there. So the Aria Organic is 16 ohms of impedance and 94 dB of sensitivity. The HE1000 Special Edition is 35 ohms of impedance and 95 dB of sensitivity. And then the HE1000 Stealth Edition is 32 ohms of impedance and 93 dB of sensitivity. Weight-wise, Got to tell you, there's really virtually no difference. It's about 18 grams between the heaviest of these headphones to the lightest of the Aria Organic being 440 grams and the Special Edition being 440 grams as well. I'm going to be doing this a lot during the video, but so you kind of get it. They're all pretty similar there. And I got to say, comfort wise, I thought all three of these were comfortable. All three of these had decent clamp force and fit me perfectly fine. Now that is my head and that is my head shape. And these are the asymmetrical, you know, kind of egg-shaped shells, egg-shaped shells, egg-shaped cups that you're going to be wearing. You're not wearing eggshells in your head. Egg-shaped cups that you're going to be wearing on your head. So now the next thing I want to do is kind of set up how I did my comparisons with this. And then, of course, we will jump right into the sound. All right, so I think it's important to note all the gear that I use to listen to these. So my DAC is the Bifrost 264. And then I used a couple of different amps and a portable solution. So starting with my portable solution, my Cayenne RU7, that was able to power all three of these headphones perfectly fine. I did use high gain for the most part on all three of them. And I probably needed to use just a touch more volume on the HE1000 headphones over the organic, just because the organic is probably the easiest one to drive. And then for my amps, I used the shit Midgard that I still have on hand. And for tubes, I use my Cayenne HA3A. Now, the next thing I did was I listened to several tracks on Tidal and I used quality flak files, you know, MQA, if that even matters to anybody, it doesn't to me. Uh, and then, you know, even low quality files just to give kind of a general idea of the sound signatures between all three of these headphones. And I can see why I've been asked that so many times about the differences because these all sound very similar and the differences, I think, are what matter the most and what I want to talk about, of course, in this video. So what I did is I chose four tracks and really three tracks and an album. But between all of the tracks that I chose, I'm going to give you my song impressions of each headphone through those tracks to kind of give you an idea of what you're going to find, I think, different between all three of these headphones should they be on your bucket list of Hi-Fi Men or Hi-Fi Men. I'm going to keep doing that. Let's do that next. 
Hey, super quick here, guys. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel because I am really trying to grow my sub count. I would love to get to 2000 by around March when I'm gonna be heading off to New York Can Jam. So if you'd like to do that, help me out, join the channel. I would highly appreciate that. And I'll let you get back to the video. All right, first track I wanna talk about is Who Man by Green Tea Pang. And I'm really starting to dig Green Tea Pang's music, by the way. But on this track, on the HE1000 Special Edition, one of the first things I remember I wrote down on my notes was shakers that I was hearing behind her voice. And I could really hear that like it was right behind my ear here that somebody was shaking that instrument and hearing her voice kind of brought forward but not mid forward. It was just excellent clarity, excellent details of mid range. And I got a decent amount of width and stage to it as well. And then that low end was just nice and pleasant. It wasn't overly boomy or anything like that. Just a nice, pleasant low end. And it all came together for a beautiful mix and a beautiful way to listen to that track. Now then going to the HE1000 Stealth Edition, it was a little bit warmer of a tonality. And I felt like the top end was kind of chopped off a little bit. Not drastically, but I'm saying like, okay, maybe rolled off is a better way of putting that. Although I still probably got a little bit of sibilance every now and then on some S's and T's, but then that low end seemed a little bit more pronounced and there was a little bit more punchiness, I would say, to the lower mid range and not a ton. This isn't that kind of a track, but enough to where I, again, wrote that down and noticed it. And the other big difference I noticed between the Stealth and the Special Edition were those shakers I talked about. They weren't quite as pronounced. So the details of that whatever part of the treble or the upper mid range that was coming through wasn't quite as pronounced. Now, moving on to the Aria Organic, that was a lot closer to the special edition than the Stealth. And I think really the difference between the two was the special edition was just a little bit more resolution and details than even the Organic was, but the Organic had that stage and probably was the brightest of the three. Not overly bright, but definitely noticed to be the brightest. And I felt like the vocals were pushed a little bit more forward even than the special edition was. But that low end on the organic is still one of my favorite things about that headphone. And I felt like it was even more lush and girthy on the organic than even the other two, but it was very slight. All right, so now let's talk about the second track. And this track was Richter Mercy by Max Richter and Marie Samuelson. This is a violin and piano duo track. And I found this on a title recommendation. I thought, wow, this is gonna be a good one to sample all three of these headphones. And what I can tell you is, as you go through this track, there is a moment around the three minute and 30 mark into the four minute mark where the energy of the track really ramps up. And that is where I definitely noticed the difference between all three of these headphones. Starting with the Stealth Edition, that extra bit of energy was smooth, just a very relaxing listen, and it didn't get overly aggressive as it was going to that moment of the track to where I could see, you know, if somebody maybe wanted something of a smoother listen and a warmer tonality, they would like something like that out of the stealth. Also, I didn't notice quite as much vibrato and just reverb and things on the stealth. And then as I got into the Aria Organic, that was definitely the most aggressive as far as that violin being really up and forward and just really hearing the string. And again, that vibrato and getting a sense of that and getting a sense of space on the mix. You could kind of hear the, you know, the sound of the violin kind of bouncing off the, the stage or the walls or whatever you want to say like that. I played violin growing up. So I, I don't know why I laughed when I said that. I played violin when I was growing up. So I kind of understand, you know, what that sounds like when you're in that moment. And then the special edition was the special edition of this track that just gave it the biggest resolution and the most details that I had, but it was damn close between, between the Aria organic and the special edition to where, you know, again, I just kind of view this one as kind of the baby brother of this one. And this one was kind of the odd man out, but a different way to experience that track. Now let's go to the third track, All right? And this track, is All Your Love Turned to Passion by Sarah Kay. And it's a blues track. And I love this track. So when I sample this, the first thing I want to tell you is on the special edition, around the 45 second mark, you're going to feel some lower bass really kick in. And her voice 
is deeper in the registry for a female vocalist. And I felt on the Stealth Edition, it was such a nice presentation of that track and gave you a lot of warmth in there and just some grip to that bass guitar and was probably the most pleasing and smoothened out listen I got. And then, you know, when some of those high moments of the, you know, electric guitar and things kicked in, uh, when you get a little bit more aggressive, it was just a smoothened out listen. Again, a little bit more on the intimate side, but that did not bother me at all. And I really enjoyed that. And then moving on to the Aria Organic, I would say there it was pretty similar to the stealth as far as that low end really just being full and have that full sound to it. But when you get into some of those more aggressive, you know, upper guitar moments, that's where I think that could bother somebody if you're, you know, more susceptible to brightness and things of a headphone. The organic still can get a little bit bright at times there. Now, me personally, I enjoyed that track because that little bit of forwardness doesn't bother me but I could see where that could on others. But again, you know, that low end was very lush. And then on the special edition, again, gonna sound like I'm repeating myself, but was a lot like the organic, but I do feel like that low end wasn't quite as pronounced and I didn't quite get as much engagement out of that as probably what I would personally like for my preferences, but make no mistake. I mean, there was plenty of details there, plenty of resolution and was probably the most smoothened out as far as not being overly bright while being bright, if that makes any bit of sense at all. All right, now with that, I do wanna roll into my final track, and really it's just the entire album of Fleetwood Mac's Rumors. It is such an excellent album, and I didn't wanna pick out just one track to talk about, like I probably could have. What I will tell you between the difference of all three of these headphones going through that album was a lot of what I've already told you, and that is, the Stealth probably has the most lower mid-range region, I would say, out of that album and was the least amount of forwardness and vocals and forwardness in the mid-range to where if you want more of a relaxed listen, I can really see why somebody would dig the Stealth Magnet Edition because that just does that for you in that regard. If you want something with a little bit more stage to it, more details, more pronounced and everything, um, yeah, you know, that's where I think the special edition is going to come into play and especially going through that album you know so many details voice you know the tambourine they like to use so much just sounded so damn accurate playing through that album and then a lot of the cymbal splashes were the most timbre accurate to my ear anyway when i listened to the he 1000 special edition and then the organic was kind of the in between the organic had a lot of good low end to it it maintained stage but I do think sometimes cymbals sound a little too splashy and a little too, I guess, hissy sometimes because of some of that brightness that you get. But make no mistake of the details because they do give you so much of that into the upper treble. And I do like the fact that it gives it, gives it a more open sound like it does on the special edition. But again, I love the low end of the organic and you know it's really around probably the mid to upper bass that you're really going to kind of feel that sometimes and feel a little bit more slam than you will on these other headphones especially when i was listening to hip-hop music and electronic music and things like that that's where the organic can really give you some more of that slammy nature to it even more so than the these other two headphones but it's not a ton more these are very subtle differences between the three and with that, I think I'm ready to wrap up this video and talk about my final conclusions between all three. I'm gonna break it down for you. So the Stealth Magnet Edition to me is the warmest tonality between all three of these, but if you're not wanting to have a lot of brightness and you're more susceptible to that, then I think the Stealth Magnet Edition is gonna be a solid choice for you, especially if you don't want your mid-range to be quite as forward because I don't feel like it is when I've listened. And then if you want something with just a lot of details and you want good clarity, the top resolution of the three of these, and you like a pleasant low end still, you like the stage, I think the HE1000 Special Edition is definitely worth it for the $19.99 price point it's coming in at when you step up from something like the Organic. But I still think the Organic is such a good value choice. I know I'm saying value for $1,299, but I'm talking about value between the three of these 
is such a smart value choice on where it came in at. This headphone, I really think, caused these other two to drop in price because this one is so damn good for where it comes in at $12.99. You get space, you get stage, you get a really good full body base, you get some crispiness of the treble range, which can bother some people depending on what you're looking at. Is it still my choice out of the three of these? I, I mean, I'd be lying if I said it was. If I had the money to stretch to go to the HE1000 Special Edition, I definitely would because I prefer this sound signature and I like this sound signature and I get more details, but the Stealth Magnet Edition is probably not quite my preferences because it's a little bit more intimate than what I would like, but I can't deny the fact that it's a nice, smooth sound. And if you want to go from that, I wouldn't blame you for wanting to reach for that headphone either. So there you go. Hopefully this video helped you guys. If so, please smash that like button. And as always, guys, I have other things that I am working on that will be coming up very, very soon. I thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.